Hello, this is a guide on how to effectively level at pretty much the fastest pace possible, mainly through mob grinding. I will go into a lot of detail on explaining Black Rose Prison experience grinding, as it is by far the fastest experience grinding method in the game, but first I will also go into decent detail on Skyreach, Ritz, and other methods, and whether they are good or bad. Initially I was going to go over Mages Guild and Sigil Guild leveling, but I unfortunately lost the files I used for routes and stuff, so I'll not be going over that, both because it's boring and I realize it's kind of pointless. I'll also ignore Dark Brotherhood, Leisure Domain, and Scrying, as these are all fairly easily understood. This guide is primarily aimed at veteran players, but will contain useful information for everyone. This guide can, but probably should not be followed if you are new to the game. Burning out is very easy if you grind experience early on, your skills will be underleveled, you will have no skill points, you will have no idea how to play the game, and you will be overwhelmed with a lack of purpose of what to do afterwards. Leveling does not really make you more powerful. Grind at your own risk if you're low level and don't know what you're doing. You can still learn a lot from this guide though if you are new to the game, so feel free to stick around if it seems interesting. I will be going over the following subjects. Experience modifiers, common experience grinding methods, experience grinding sets and skills, Black Rose Prison and Skyreach methods, As you might know, you can increase the amount of experience you gain through a few different methods. There are nine different stackable ways to boost experience gain. Experience scrolls and ambrosias, event experience bonuses, the training trait on armor and weapons, the Mora's Whispers Mythic, being an ESO Plus member, marriage from using the Ring of Mara, being in a group of two, and the High Elf Racial Passive. Additionally, there is also the Explorer's Event Experience Bonus and the Heartland Conqueror set. The reason why I separated the Explorer's Event and Heartland Conqueror set is because these are a bit unique. Heartland Conqueror boosts the training trait on your weapons, but it can be a less efficient option due to how bad the set's stat lines are. The Explorer's Event, however, can be stacked on top of the other main event experience bonus, but this is a very rare special case, so you can ignore it most of the time. 50, 100, and 150% scrolls and ambrosias are mutually exclusive, so they cannot be stacked. Ignoring the Circumstantial Heartland Conqueror bonus and the Explorer's Event bonus, this makes for a total of 382% extra experience, or for a simpler calculation, 4.82 times base experience. There is also only one way of reducing incoming experience, and this is by being in a group consisting of more than two players. A two-player group is the maximum experience bonus, but three or more will cause a consistent loss of about 31.6% total experience. It should be noted that this experience reduction only affects the monster experience, so stuff like Ritz, Daily Dungeon Experience, and Quest Experience will not be affected by this. Now that we know how to increase our experience gain, we will move on to what are the best places to grind in. Going over them from least to most effective, I will be using base experience with no modifiers to keep it simple and easy to calculate the experience modifiers onto the numbers. By far one of the most common, yet slowest experience grinds is Alakir Dolmen Farming. This is by far the most suggested and most overrated experience grind spot in the game. At peak times, a cycle of 3 Dolmen completions will take exactly 5 minutes and 47 seconds. This gives us a very accurate figure to work with, as the experience gain in Dolmens is also very constant. The ads give almost no experience, so they are barely a rounding error. 97% of the experience is the Dolmen completion experience, which has a base amount of 7748 experience. 7,748 times 3 is 23,244. We can complete almost 31 dolmens per hour, meaning we can expect about 240,188 base experience per hour. Adjusting for some ad kills along the way, which does add up to a decent amount over time, it can be pretty safely estimated that you can get about 250,000 experience per hour at base with dolmen grinding. This is not bad compared to questing, but it gets utterly destroyed by even the least efficient of the next methods. Next we have common overland grind spots. There is a ton of them, at least 40, that big YouTubers and other people like to list. I won't list any since they're easily found, but basically we're talking about stuff like North Sentinel Zombie Grind and Verant Morass in Greenshade. These are not actually as bad as you might think at first, but still don't really come close to any of the higher tier methods. One notable exception is Spell Scarring Craglorn, which has been claimed to be close or even faster than BRP but it's pretty much impossible to get good reliable figures on this since the routes are heavily contested most of the time. This makes it good in theory, but in practice relatively bad most of the time.
This is an obvious one that you might already have been doing. It is actually better than I initially expected. I didn't even put it on the list at first until I realized how strong it can be. The main problem with this is ethics and practicality issues. Ignoring the daily 101,047 experience, you will get 33,682 experience per random normal dungeon completion at level 50 and above. This is an easy stat to work with, but it's hard to figure out exactly how much experience you'll get from the dungeon outside of that 33,682 bonus. This would depend heavily on which dungeon you get. For most DLC dungeons, the amount of in-dungeon experience you gain is a lot less than base game dungeons due to less trash pools and bosses. I gained on average about 12,000 base experience in DLC dungeons, and 20 to 30,000 in longer base game dungeons. This gives a decent average of like 18,000 dungeon experience and 33,682 from the activity finder. This gives an average of about 51,000. Here's where the practicality problems come in. Across all dungeons, your finish time will also wildly vary. You could get Fungal Grotto 1, finish it before you even finish loading in. Or you could also get City of Ash 2, or god forbid Lair of Marzalok, and be playing until the universe dies of heat death. Ethics can also be a bit of an issue. If you're an in-game player that can pretty much solo most normal dungeons and steamroll through them in a group, using the activity finder as your personal grind spot is kind of rude to new players who may be questing, or people in general who dislike speedrunning through dungeons. You might not care about this though. The method I would predict is most efficient for this type of grind would be to have a group of four with one player at level 10. This would guarantee you get only super low level base game dungeons, which are on average much shorter. This would guarantee Fungal Glider 1, Spindle Clutch 1, or Banish Shells 1. These would be completable in less than three minutes with even a, just a decent group. Let's establish you'd be completing a dungeon every 4.5 minutes. This would put us at 680,000 base experience per hour. The alternate example would have us completing an extremely short dungeon in under 3 minutes, which would give us 1,020,000 base experience per hour. This figure should be altered though, because in those level 1 dungeons you will not be getting the same amount of in-dungeon experience from monsters as my average would estimate. It would be closer to 25,000 to 35,000 per completion, putting us around 600,000 to 700,000 base experience per hour. Still though, not as bad as I had initially predicted. I also did not factor in loading screen and login times from low level alt accounts, so it's not as good as it might seem. Skyreach Catacombs. This place has been a staple grind spot for a long time, and for good reason. Skyreach, according to the most efficient run, gives exactly 48,379 base experience per run. Assuming each run takes roughly 3 minutes and 15 seconds, and resetting takes about 15 seconds as well, this would give us a total base experience per hour of 829,000. This is almost exactly half that of the top experience grind method in the game, Black Rose Prison, at least solo. However, Skyreach has a few advantages. You can earn a lot of sellable items and deconstructible items, which can speed up your crafting level, and if you don't have a ton of gold, it could be a way to make money, although not remotely competitive with trading. Mainly though, it is the best Fighters Guild grind spot in the game. Fighters Guild levels are based off of undead kills. Every Daedra or Undead will give you one Fighters Guild reputation. To level from 0 to 10 in Fighters Guild, you need to kill 6,960 Daedra or Undead. This means it takes a little over 24 runs of Skyreach to get from 0 to 10 Fighters Guild. I highly recommend doing this after leveling BRP or using Ritz, due to the ease of using CP160 gear in Skyreach, and easier access to self-sustain and healing after level 50 for endgame players. Master Ritz, along with Skyreach and BRP, are the best three grinding spots in the game. Ritz are quite different due to involving no combat whatsoever, however they almost require add-ons to even compete with other experience grinding methods I've gone over, so if you are a console player or do not care about add-ons, you can basically ignore this as a top experience grinding method. It is also by far the highest base experience in the game. However, this does not necessarily mean it is the fastest method. There are six different type of completable writs. These are split into two groups, equipment and consumable crafting writs. These give two different experience amounts, 11,227 for consumables and 18,525 for equipment. The event writs will also fall under the consumable category in terms of experience gain. Their writ voucher amount, quality, and material cost do not matter for experience. It will always be one of those two experience amounts. This is a very large amount of experience for such a simple action. Unfortunately, the experience gained from turning in writs is not affected by the training trait. 
the Moore's Whispers Mythic, and the Group Bonus Experience. It is, however, affected by Scrolls and Ambrosias, the Event Experience Bonus, the Ring of Mara, and ESO Plus, in addition to the High Elf Rishul Passive. This makes the total highest practical experience bonus for writ grinding lower from 382% to 271%, or 3.71 times base writ experience. How much experience per hour is this? Well, it depends on how you calculate it. If you only include turning in the writs, it's ridiculously fast. Assuming you could turn them in once per second, you would be getting 66.69 million experience per hour, but this is obviously not a fair or realistic comparison. You'd have to include at the very least the time it took to craft the items, and the time and money spent to obtain the writs as well. This is not easy to calculate because it depends on the market at the time, how fast you craft, ping plays a pretty big factor during the crafting as well, etc. The most efficient method to level using writs is to buy alchemy and enchanting writs, because you can craft them much faster than the other types of writs using Dolgabon's Lazy Writ Crafter in combination with the Writworthy add-on. This will actually be a much more efficient method for different types of writs in the quarter 4 patch of 2023, because the game will get combination attunable stations, combining every single attunable set station into one table, meaning you can craft any crafted set in one menu. But for now, alchemy and enchanting writs beat those out due to efficiency, despite lower experience gain per writ completion. It takes about 10 to 15 minutes per 100 crafted items to be crafted. Unfortunately, you also need to account for the inventory space for storing the writs, which will be equal to the space used for storing the items you crafted for turning in the writs. Assuming you have the highest possible inventory space, this makes for a total of 107 writs per turn in session, unless you have duplicate writs. Assuming you can turn in 107 writs every 15 minutes, including turning in, you would be getting about 4.8 million experience per hour. This is absolutely by far the highest base experience per hour, but this is not including finding and buying the writs, and gathering materials, so this will be a very variable figure. As I said earlier, it's hard to determine exactly how fast it is in comparison to Black Rose Prison due to how different they are. It is still, however, a very fast, efficient, and satisfying leveling method. I highly recommend it as long as you can afford it, because it can get expensive quite fast. This part is impractical as of this video's upload date, but will probably become viable in quarter 4 of 2023. If we assume the same time spent crafting consumable writs can be spent crafting equipment writs, this would mean we can get to 7.928 million experience per hour. This is the absolute top end for writs, and you can't really get beyond that. The real experience per hour rate will likely be a fair bit lower due to the fact that I don't account for loading screens, buying writs, and leveling crafting, obtaining the resources themselves, etc. A lot of these things overlap with general gameplay though, so it's hard to say you should or should not calculate them in with the time spent calculation. Although these base experience amounts seem much higher than the other methods, you have to keep in mind that these are only partially affected by experience modifiers. The realistic fastest writ XP per hour over a longer time is actually a fair bit lower than the fastest BRP experience per hour if you're in a group. Normal Black Rose Prison. This is by far the most cost-effective grinding method in the game. There are two common ways of grinding experience in Black Rose Prison. The 1 to 4 method, where you complete all waves until the first boss, porting out and resetting at the end, and repeat. And the round 2 reset method, where you only complete the second round's three waves and die to the last elite add to reset it and repeat. In all of my tests, round 2 reset easily comes out on top both solo and duo, but especially solo. This is mainly because there is a massive difficulty stacking the mages in the later rounds, not to mention an increase in high health elite adds, which simply take longer to kill and stack. Therefore, I will not go over rounds 1 to 4 and instead fully focus on round 2 reset. Round 2 consists of 3 waves. Wave 1 consists of 1 mage, 2 archers, and 2 melees. Wave 2 consists of 2 archers, 6 melees. Wave 3 consists of 4 archers and 1 elite add. This is a clean total of 26,900 base experience per round 2 completion. As you will see later in the video, all classes can do this in about 30 seconds, including 15 seconds of respawn time and another 15 seconds for the door to close and the round to start. This puts us at a fairly consistent 1 minute per round completion cycle. This gives us a pretty consistent 1.61 million experience per hour.
First of all, due to the most efficient BRP grinding method, we will ignore sustain and survivability completely. This will make sense later in the video. Due to the low health of enemies and short fight length, pretty much all proc sets are useless, and most dots are too due to the amount of time wasted casting them. This makes our gear choice pretty easy. My most optimally recommended setup is as follows. Pelinal's Wrath on body, Sulzan on front bar and jewelry, Maelstrom Lightning Staff in Inferno back bar, Mora's Whispers on shoulder, and one slime car on the head. Pelinal's Wrath is an extremely niche set, but it works perfectly here due to its extremely high weapon and spell damage bonus, and its oblivion damage making it extremely consistent to reset the rounds by getting your health to zero faster. The damage shield is nice, but irrelevant for our purposes. It can be ignored. For variable options, you can swap the helmet to medium or heavy if you need to level those armor skill lines, or you can swap Sulzan to body for medium leveling. Daggers are the best option, but the difference isn't large since we are both under the pen cap and under the crit cap. Maelstrom Inferno does not have to be Inferno nor Perfected. It doesn't make a difference, unless you're on DK, or Sork. For alternative gear options, Order's Wrath Body instead of Pelinal's Wrath, Heartland Conqueror Body instead of Pelinal's Wrath, Mother's Sorrow Body instead of Pelinal's Wrath, Ansel's Torment Front Bar instead of Sulzan, Yandir's Might Front Bar instead of Sulzan, Back Alley Gorman Front Bar or Body. There are more options, but these are the most accessible slash obvious. Any clean flat stat increasing setup will work fairly well here. You should avoid proc sets or sets that build up in damage potential over time for the aforementioned reasons. The pen cap in BRP is still 18,200, so light armor performs the best due to the concentration passive, in addition to the lover stone, which increases your offensive penetration, but the thief stone is very close as well. It's hard to notice the difference between them unless you are missing major breach. Sustain is not a problem we have to worry about in BRP, so even if you stack into stamina, light armor will be better. This is the base setup that will work on all classes. The skills outlined in red are essential, and the skills outlined in green are replaceable. Feel free to pause the video to check out these setups. As previously said, the fastest method of gaining experience in Black Rose Prison is to reset on round 2 of the first arena. You'll first need to go into Black Rose Prison and complete the first round, also consisting of three waves. This isn't exactly difficult, but with my build specifically, it can be a bit more challenging since the round is a bit longer than the sigils last, and my build relies on the sustain and healing sigils. This only needs to be done once to start the cycle, so there's no need for it to be super efficient or clean. Round 2. For the beginning, always start on the sustain sigil, then move to the mage spawning location to grab the healing sigil. You can put down one or two ground dodds during the run-up to the healing sigil. First, you should chain in the archer and melee closest to the mage. When they are chained in, you still have a bit over 1 GCD before the furthest archer and melee are within chain range, so you can use your AoE spammable during this time to get the first three adds to low health. After this, pull in the archer and then the melee. Once they're all chained in, you can kill them. Now move roughly halfway to the middle, next to the flame atronach rune. Put down your dots and chain the closest archer, then the two melee that spawn on the entrance door. They will move into chaining distance in their respective order due to the position we are standing in. The furthest two melee and archer will have moved into distance by now as well. Sometimes the archer will channel taking aim out of chain range, so you can just chain the two melee instead of one archer and one melee if that happens. The closest two melee will have moved into your dots by now, so you don't need to chain them. You can leave one enemy behind, since this wave's completion only requires 7 out of the 8 enemies to be killed to start the next wave. Now, place dots, move to the middle, and begin chaining the archers. As soon as you feel confident that they will die, begin spamming equilibrium to reduce your health faster. Respawn as soon as you die, and repeat. 
This is the fastest method of doing BRP efficiently solo. This method will take about 27 to 33 seconds depending on crit RNG and movement RNG since the archers can stay out of chain range while channeling, leading to much slower rounds. There are some exceptions that need to be taken into consideration on a class per class basis, so I will go over them individually. Dragon Knight does not need potions due to igneous weapons. Recast igneous weapons when you finish the second wave to keep up minor brutality. Minor brutality is a buff worth keeping up in this setup since you have the time, but you can also substitute it with Shimmering Frenzy for more damage. Always use Inferno Backbar on DK due to flame damage passives. You can front bar whip for a little bit more weapon damage. Templar is one of the only two classes that needs to use potions to gain major sorcery or brutality. Recast Solar Barrage when you finish the second wave to keep up minor sorcery. Minor sorcery is worth keeping up since you have the time, but you can again substitute it with Shimmering Frenzy for more damage. You need to front bar an Adric Spear skill to gain the critical damage passive. Sorcerer does not need potions due to Critical Surge. Sork is the only class that can reliably complete round 2 without the use of the Healing Sigil. This makes it the fastest class at XP grinding solo in BRP. Whirling Blades is also buffed by the Physical Damage passive, and you can use Lightning's Desert Staff, which gets a big increase as well due to the Lightning Damage passive. Unfortunately, there is no easy way to proc its crit passive, Minor Prophecy, so you can use either Daedric Mines or Dark Deal. Dark Deal is the most consistent option because it applies Minor Berserk to you as well, but neither of these buffs are a game changer. If you don't want to keep them up, then don't. Other than that, there's not much different for Sorcerer compared to the other classes. Nightblade does not need potions due to its spammable. You should use it before chaining everything in the first wave. You don't need to do anything special to proc its crit passive, as it's proc by dealing critical damage. Nightblade also gains minor courage from power extraction, but Whirling Blades is pretty much the same damage even without minor courage, so there's no big advantage there. You might think it's possible to do this on Nightblade without using the healing sigil, like Sork, using Sap Essence, but I tried everything and the healing is just not enough from Sap Essence. Of course incorporating extra heals like Vigor could work, but this would reduce the overall efficiency and leave you with longer rounds than with the healing sigil due to that few extra GCDs needing to be used just to survive. Warden technically does not need potions, but it's a lot more efficient to use potions damage wise. Warden is kind of annoying because you can't efficiently use the portal solo. Silver release is just better because you can't get in position to pre-pull the adds in a good spot since you need to kill the previous ones too. The ice staff passive is also unfortunately wasted due to whirling blades being just much better in terms of killing these specific adds than ice pulsing, even with the 12% damage buff. Deep fissure's timing does not line up anywhere, so we will use subterranean assault instead. Play the round like normal, except on wave 1, pre-buff sub-assault in that empty GCD between the first two chains and the last two chains, and later pre-buff it as the last GCD before chaining the first archer in the third wave. You can line up the burst pretty well this way. Necromancer needs potions for major sorcery and brutality. This class is pretty frustrating because of beckoning armor, otherwise normal except for the end. Use Blast Bones in the dead GCD before chaining the last add in the first wave. This makes it explode right as you chain him in.
In the second wave, it's possible Beckoning Armor can chain some add, but don't rely on it. It's very random. Recast it at the end of this wave. In the third wave, chain two archers and then use Blast Bones. If Beckoning chains one of the last two archers, chain the other to save a GCD. This is kind of hard to do, since if you're really fast, you'd need like a 0.2 second reaction time to see which one you should chain, but we might as well try, since it's either normal speed or faster. Technically, you can use Beckoning Armor to go way faster than this, but it's very high RNG, since the Flame Atronachs can randomly proc your Beckoning Armor, and then you're screwed if you rely on Beckoning to chain specific adds. Arcanist does not need potions to get major sorcery or brutality. In the first wave, try to chain the archer and the melee as stacked as possible on top of the mage, and then use flail. Chain the archer in a way that makes it align with the last add and the mage. You can hit fate carver on him without chaining from here. Second wave is normal. and the third wave is a bit different, you want to chain three archers and just beam the last one from range. All waves will let you beam at three crux, even though you don't use flail on the last two. For the skyreach methods, this is pretty much the same on every class. I'd recommend Pelinor's Wrath or Order's Wrath, but you can also use Heartland Conqueror here due to the extremely low damage requirements compared to BRP. The build doesn't matter as much as BRP, so as long as you have decent damage set from the sets mentioned earlier, Blood Mist and these four champion points, Reaving Lows, Slippery, Bloody Renewal, and Siphoning Spells, you'll be fine. All classes can use Vigor, and I recommend the Echoing Vigor morph, as it needs less recasting. You can also use Pale Order instead of any healing option, but this means giving up more as Whispers, which in my opinion is okay due to consistency. Blood Mist is also extremely good here, I'd highly recommend it, it basically covers all your healing needs and allows you to skip the 7 add trash pool before the chest, speeding up the run quite a bit. You can use the BRP build pretty much 1 to 1, but unslot Equilibrium since it's only useful in BRP. I'd recommend slotting a resistance buff or heal over time instead. The builds will look like this, but you can edit them to suit your needs. Pelinor's Wrath is also quite risky if you don't have consistent healing or low stats. You can also use medium armor for faster movement speed, since the pen cap in Skyreach is 9100, but you'll need either a source of Major Breach or the Lover Stone to deal maximum damage. The route is about 3 minutes and 15 seconds, but this can probably be done a bit faster with different methods. Start by aggroing the leftmost adds, then running to the right door while aggroing the rest of the adds. Try to aggro the skeleton piles in the corner as fast as possible since they take a while to totally spawn. Stick around in the area until the furthest mobs are through the door. If you run immediately, they will get stuck and you'll get stuck in combat for the rest of the run, meaning you can't open the chest, and you'll miss out on a lot of experience. As soon as they're about to get through the door, keep running while aggroing the skeleton fire piles in the back with a ranged kill or light attacks. Note that single target attacks are a bit inconsistent at aiming at these targets, so a ranged AoE skill like Wall or Blazing Spear is more consistent. Stack in this corner here, put down dots, and begin using your spam alert. Just make sure to stay alive, as you'll be taking a lot of damage in this corner. Try to chain in these ranged adds as well, but be careful as the damage can overwhelm you pretty fast if you're not healing and you're staying in the AoEs, and if you're not using Pelinor's Wrath, because the shield actually is very useful here. Next. Skip this pool of adds using mist form. If you don't have mist form, kill them. Now open the chest, immediately aggro the two skeleton fire piles in the corners and run to the skeleton add pool and pile from earlier. Aggro it and run to the next door. Aggro both this pool and light attack the ghost so that you will not have to do that trash pool later. Those don't tend to run very fast for the last pool due to their distance from the stack, saving time in the long run. Now, stack on the back wall to make the ranged ads stack a bit closer so you don't have to keep killing them one by one. This will take approximately one minute, and the skeleton waves will keep coming. The last wave will have both the Flesh Atronach and the Bone Colossus spawn at once. If you kill these two ads before killing the skeletons in the middle by too large of a time margin, 
the chest will be locked forever, but there will be a bit more skeleton spawns than normal. Pick whichever you want. Now, just run to the next area and pull the skeleton piles while running. When you reach the stairs at the end, just light attack the skeleton pile and the undead trash pool below and run back. Stand right next to this pillar and use Destro Ult in the location where you were earlier, since the ranged ads will not be standing in your AoEs. As you kill more of the melee ads, keep moving a little bit more toward the wall so the ranged ads behind you stack a bit closer. But there should only be a few left by the end anyway. When there's no melee ads left, move out to kill the last 5 or so ranged ads that usually remain and pour it out. These pools should take roughly 50, 70, and 50 seconds. With some running included and reset, this is about 3 minutes and 15 seconds per run. That's it for the Black Rose Prison and Skyreach methods. The reason I made this video is because there's hundreds of misconceptions about how to properly grind experience in ESO, especially within BRP. There's many videos claiming to give you the best experience grinding advice. They're not all bad, but they all lack a lot of details or just claim outrageous things. The most common thing these guides seem to get wrong every single time is the maximum experience bonus, which I found pretty funny. It's always claimed to be way higher than it actually is. The only motivation I had for making the video was to be able to link it instead of having to type for like 20 minutes on all the details. I didn't go into too much detail on the lower tier experience grinding methods because there's so much extra information and variables to deal with, not to mention the amount of information I missed in BRP and Skyreach itself, but I've been working on this video for so long that it's become a meme, so there probably won't be a follow up video on this. This video is not going to be perfect, and there's probably going to be a lot of mistakes in it but it will be far better than existing experience grinding guides out there. I will keep updating any mistakes and errors, and will post improvements, tips, and frequently asked questions in a pinned comment in the comments section. Make sure to check it out after watching. This is not my normal type of content, but I hope to make more guides in the future. I normally upload once every 800 or so years with a solo trifecta or solo trifecta speedrun or something. Feel free to check those out. That being said, I am pretty close to completing a new solo trifecta, but I'll probably add some commentary explaining my strats and thought process behind the choices in that one, since I usually just drop it and disappear for half a year. So yeah, see ya.